go. All right, five two. Oh, wrong one. Five two day two. Back to those identities. Okay, yeah, <laughs> hey, we're at the verify stage. Can I write instead of S? You can write any letter you want in there. They had S's on. I had S's to start with, and I got rid of those. Okay. So this is where they're giving us the answer. Our goal is to show that one side equals the other side. Okay? So we work with the more complicated side to make it equal the more simplified side. So what do you consider the more complicated side here? Cotangent. Yeah. So what can you do with cotangent? You can sine over, no cosine over. Cosine over sine. And tangent is sine over cosine. Am I allowed to cancel across this add sign here? No. You cannot ever cancel across an add sign. All right. So I've got two fractions here. What's the only thing I can do with two fractions? Combine them. Add them together. I'm going to add these two fractions. What do I need in order to add fractions together? Common denominator. So I'm going to make two fractions out of these and then bring them together as one fraction. What is my common denominator? Cosine. Yep. You can multiply the two denominators together to get the common denominator. So it's sine times cosine. Okay. So take a look. Enough. You started with sine as your denominator. What did I multiply by to get this new denominator? Cosine. So if I multiply the bottom by cosine, you multiply the top by KD. You get cosine squared. So show the hit it with a 1. I think people don't want to show much work on these, but it, it, it helps. So what do I have to multiply the second fraction by? Sine. I have to multiply by sine over sine. Isn't that cosine? Oh, yep, cosine squared. Why is it happening? Why is what happening? Like, why are you hitting this with one? Because I changed the denominator. I'm trying to get to my common denominator. So what did you do to that fraction? I multiplied the two together. And I said that. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Oh, wow, okay. It makes you happy. It will. Okay. Okay, really now that you've got the two fractions with the common denominator, what's the next thing to do? Uh, add, them, add, them. add them together. You make a single. The whole goal is to bring these together as one fraction instead of two separate fractions. So I bring them together as one fraction. What's in my denominator? It's Sine times cosine. And the numerators you just add, like you've got, or subtract, whatever you have here. So it becomes cosine squared plus sine squared. Am I allowed to cancel now? Yes. No. Okay. No. You can never cancel. Remember when there's an add sign? Remember, so the add sign is like they're holding hands, so I can't chop one off without taking the other one. <coughs> but can I do anything at this point? That equals uh, one. That equals one from your Pythagoreans. So I've got one over sine times cosine. Now keep your eye on the prize. What am I trying to get to? Can I can I break this apart so that it says secant and cosine cosecant? How do I do that? 
1 over sine times 1 over cosine. Is that a legal move on my part? To break that single fraction up into those two multiplied together? Oh yeah. What's 1 over sine equal to? Cosecant. Cosecant. What's 1 over cosine equal to? Secant. Did I verify what I wanted to verify? Yeah, I did. I got them in the wrong order, but the order there doesn't matter because I'm multiplying. Okay, how did you get to begin with the cosine over sine and sine over cosine? Cotangent is cosine over sine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, we've got several of these today. Several, several examples? Correct. I verified it. Cosecant times secant equals secant times. My goal was to get to this. So I stopped when I got there. They, if they say verify, they can be done. Okay, here's our next one. This is a verify again. Okay, I did tell you to take the more complicated side and make it equal the more simplified side. Sometimes you can work on both sides and just get them to come out equal to each other. And the reason I say that is I see these two squared functions here. And if I look at my Pythagoreans, I think I can simplify this side. Equals one. Uh, well, I would call this one the harder side, but this one does simplify. So if it's something that simplifies, I think I'd work on both sides. So if I look for secant squared minus tan squared, right here, if you rearrange this identity to say secant squared minus tan squared, what does secant squared minus tan squared equal? Equals one. So the right-hand side simplifies to one. So that's a legal move on my part. You're good? Okay. So, um, this one here. You've got options. Remember the two roads we can go down? I could get a common denominator or I could switch these out to sines and cosines and then get common denominator after. I'm not really sure which, which road is going to be the quickest road, let's to be honest. You want to switch everything out to sines and cosines first? Yeah. yeah. Alright, let's see what we get. So this becomes, and I'm going to write lots of steps down, cosine over, and we might be going down the wrong road. Who knows? I don't know. What's secant equal to? 1 over sine. Oh, 1 over cosine, sorry, 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine. Mm -hmm. What's we're going to find out. And then sine's going to stay sine. Cosecant turns into 1 over sine. Okay, so I've got cosine divided by a fraction. How do I divide by a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal. What am I going to have? Nothing. Oh. I'm going to have cosine squared because the cosine on top is like cosine over 1. Are you okay with that? I'm going to flip this 1 over cosine over. If I flip it over, what am I going to have? Cosine over 1. So what do I get when I multiply? Cosine squared. We did the right thing. You can see you got some vision here. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to flip the 1 over sine over. How are denominators what? They're not. Denominators. They're not. I'm not bringing them together. I'm just working. I just simplified this one out. Now I'm just simplifying this one out. We chose not to go down the common denominator road. And I said, because common denominator road, 
I think it would take us there. I don't know which one, which road was shorter. Yep, the eyes chose the little bus side. Oh, but look at how nice this is. Oh, it's very nice. Thanks, Axel. What's cosine squared plus sine squared? One. 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 Does that equal what I had on the other side? Yes. One. Verified. So here we did a little bit to both sides. Fair. That's another way to verify. Instead of just working on one side and making it equal to the other side. Sometimes you can do a little bit on both sides. All right, the last two okay, are the we'll tough we'll ones. Okay. <coughs> mm hmm. So two. Right? Yes, absolutely. Much all the steps easy. have to be there. I will grade all the steps. There are no quantum leaps allowed. You get points off for quantum leaps. So this pretty much has nothing to do with the end result. What? This pretty much has nothing to do with the end result. No. Yes. Quite a bit. Yep. Well, no, that's just my scrap paper here I've got. Number three. We had one very, very similar to this in the first section. Okay, there's a verify. Um, this right hand side is simplified. I don't really see anything I need to do there. So we're just going to take the more complicated side and make it equal to the uh, right hand side. So what road do you want to travel? The common denominator road would be the best one. So we're going to make two fractions. Show lots of work. Yep, we're going to work on the left. So, what's my common denominator? Right, you multiply the two denominators together. Justin, you paying attention? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I see where you were going, but it wasn't going to make it equal anything. Is that eventually going to have to get boiled? Yep. You remember. Okay, so I've got my common denominator. I've changed the denominators. The numerators are going to change. Because what I'm actually doing is I'm actually going to hit each fraction with a 1. Hit it with a 1. Okay. You good? Why not? They're exactly the same. They're a common denominator. Both. I'm getting this fraction to have this denominator, this fraction to have the same denominator, common denominator. Okay. So, yes, what's your question? What, how did that, like, why did you just get two all of a sudden? How did that one? I made a common denominator. If you were listening, I said, to get a common denominator, you take each denominator and you multiply them together. So I did. I wrote this one times this one as my common denominator. I wrote this one times this one as my common denominator. Now I've got to figure out the numerators. So that always, works. always will work. Multiply yep, multiply the two together. That will be your common denominator. So what I'm actually doing, if I multiply, what did I multiply this denominator by? One plus, one plus sign. That tells me what I have to multiply the numerator by because I can only multiply by 1 and not change the value. So I multiply the top by 1 plus sign. Well, because I'm just multiplying by 1 and I distribute that in, what's my numerator going to be? 1 plus sign. Okay, use the same reasoning on the second one. What did the denominator get multiplied by? One minus, sign. one minus sign. So what do I have to multiply the numerator by? Same thing. Yeah, that's what we said. You said the, she just said the same thing. Oh, and I asked her what about the top, and she said the same thing. 
the top gets multiplied by the same thing as the bottom. Okay. You cannot cancel them out because then you'd be right back to the original problem. Yeah, you'd be right back to where you started. That happens a lot in these problems. Okay, why do we get a common denominator? What's the whole goal next? to bring them together as a single fraction. Your next line, I should see one fraction instead of two. Okay. Why am I doing that? I'm going to show you with numbers. Do you see it? I can show you with numbers, because if I show you a little seventh grade number one, you're going to say, oh yeah, I see it. Oh, I was thinking of... No, once you get the common denominator, your goal is to write a single fraction after that. Now I just add my numerators. I've got a one plus sign, plus another one minus sign. Now at this point, you want to simplify the numerator and foil out the denominator and simplify that. Big fraction again. What's my numerator? Two. That's nice because I need a two in my verify. One plus one. Oh, and sign, sign minus sign's gone. Okay, we're going to foil the bottom because this will always simplify. So let's foil the bottom. And I'm going to do it actually right here. 1 times 1 is 1. First. Outer Inner. is going to be a plus sign. Yeah. Inside is going to be a minus sign. Yeah. And then last times last yeah. is a minus sign squared. Signs cancel, so I've got 1 minus sine squared. <coughs> oh, that looks awful familiar. No. That looks What's awful that? familiar. Squared. Oh, that probably equals um, secant squared. It does not equal secant squared. <laughs> 1 minus sine squared. Oh, well, let me take a look. Here's a cosine squared plus sine squared. If I subtract the sine squared, I'd have 1 minus sine squared. What does 1 minus sine squared equal? Cosine. cosine squared. So the bottom is actually cosine squared. Almost. Does it equal um, 2 secant squared? Is it close to that? I'm going to guess it's what's on the other side of the... So it we is. flip the cosine, right, and then we got the... We because got what the we actually have here... And then we win. I will show you where it's coming from, but I would be fine with you saying that this equals 2 secant squared because it's 2 times 1 over cosine squared. What's 1 over cosine squared equal? Secant squared. Yeah. Because this is 2 is on the top, I'm just going to pull it off, multiplying, and when I do that, I leave a 1 in its place. It's the same thing as I had, just kind of separated it out. 2 over 1 times 1 over cosine. So you could see the 1 over cosine squared. Because there's a 2 there in the problem, I can't throw it away. You've got to carry it along. It doesn't disappear. It's still there. Yep. Times the 1 over cosine squared. See, when I took the two all off of the you know, off of the numerator, there's a one left in its place. You can. I did it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. All right. Yep. I showed Lexi. What? About the skirt. I saw the skirt. Oh, the skirt.
address. Oh my God, it's confusing. Right. I told them that she she can verify. What? Not that me? No. Oh. Oh. For a wear on the house on a lazy day. On a lazy day. Okay, this one's tricky. Yes. Yes. Okay, on one side I've got cotangents, on the other side I have tangents. And we know there's a direct relationship there. And as far as which side's more complicated, I think they're equally the same in terms of complicated looking. So it doesn't matter whether we work on the right or the left. Let's work on the right. Let's work on the right. So that means I want to get rid of ta I want to get rid of tangents and see cotangents because I know my answer is going to have cotangents in it. So we'll work on the right. Let's leave the one. What can I do with tangent? So that I see cotangents. So what's it going to be? One over cotangent. Okay. Now I at least have cotangents. But what I've got happening now is I've got a fraction in my numerator. So I want to make this 1 over 1. So I've got two, a fraction plus a fraction. Do the same thing in the denominator. Oh, this is stupid. Okay, so forget about the denominator for now. I'm going to cover that up. Forget about the denominator. I would like to add these together. What do I need in order to add those together? Common, Common denominator. So I want two fractions And this is just an equals, I kind of extended that a little bit. Okay, what's my common denominator here? Cotangent. 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 We did. Okay. It did. What I just said, was that right? I am getting a common, forget there's anything under here. I want to add these two fractions together. If I want to add fractions together, I need a common denominator. Okay. So, it's gonna, uh, so, I had a denominator of 1, I now had a cotangent. So what did I have to multiply top by? So this first numerator will now turn into cotangent. See, because you can see you've got cotangent over cotangent, that's equal to the 1 over 1 that I had. This one, what do I multiply by? Nothing, nothing. a 1 if you want to, but nothing. Mm -hmm. So, why did I get a common denominator here? What's the goal next? Make them one. Make them a single fraction. What will my single fraction be here? No. No, cotangent plus one over cotangent. Yep, remember the common denominator never changes. You just bring them together over that denominator. Can I write it up and not confuse anybody? Can I go upwards here? Because I ran out of room. Cotangent is my common denominator. And I've got cotangent plus 1. Okay, so there's my top fraction for now. Ooh, look, i got a cotangent plus 1 in it, and I wanted a cotangent plus 1. So we're probably on the right track. Yes, there's a denominator there, but I'm not done with this problem. That's just the numerator brought together as a single fraction. Okay, now I'm going to pretend I don't even have that top. Oh, there we go, I got a bottom. All right. So the total top is cotangent plus one over cotangent. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't it be the other way around? So why, isn't it like cotangent over two cotangent? Like, you know, like, um, stop for a second. If, if you had two-fifths plus three-fifths. No, nope, two-fifths plus one-fifth. What would you do with those fractions? Two-fifths plus one-fifth. What would you do? Three. You only add the numerators over the common denominator. 
It's the same thing with trig functions. You add the top two over the, the denominator never changes when you add. Okay. Let's do the same process with the bottom. What's my common denominator here? So I'm going to make two fractions with a subtraction in the middle of them. I want them over a cotangent. What's my first <coughs> numerator going to be? Um, yes. <laughs> What's my second numerator going to be? Just one. Just one. With a minus in the middle. This one's got to subtract here. This one had an add. Okay, I've got my common denominator on my two fractions. What's next? You bring them together and make one fraction out of the two. I'm going to do it right here. What's my denominator? Cotangent. Then I've got cotangent minus one as my numerator. Okay, we're almost there. Yep. So, right now I've got this fraction divided by this fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal. A fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm going to keep the top fraction. Cotangent plus 1 over cotangent. I'm going to flip the bottom one over. Yep. And what can I cancel? Keep your eye on the prize. What did I want to get to? Oh, and look at what I have. We got it. That was a lot of crap. We're done. Okay, you get to try some of these on your own. Yes. What part didn't you get? Guys, you need to stop talking. This was the numerator. This whole fraction was the numerator. was this. This was this. So I've got this fraction divided by this bottom fraction. I've got this fraction. I kept it the same. Cotangent plus 1 over cotangent multiplied by this one flipped over, the reciprocal of this one. This actually equals what I tried to get. Verified it. It equals the left-hand side. Now I'm done. <laughs> I just don't get because we start and then we go like in a loop mm -hmm. and we right back where we started. Yep, that's what verify is. That's what we're supposed to Yes. <laughs> Wait, go back down to the bottom. You've got six to try on your own. Oh, this is homework, right? Mm hmm. That is your homework.